Hello, hello, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Sydney. I talk about books and everything in between on this channel, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss out on future book reviews. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so I am really excited about today's video. I'm excited about all my videos, but in today's video, I'm going to be going over the 20 books that I read in 2020. My New Year's resolution was to read 10, but I messed around and read double the amount. So I am so excited to share these with you. And for your convenience, every book that I mentioned in this video is going to be listed on my bookshop, which I will leave the link to in the description box down below. Let's get started. All right, going to no particular order, I am going to explain why I chose the book, what I liked about it, and my general thoughts as I usually be doing in my normal uh, book review video. So to start, I have We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I do have a review, a little mini book review of this up already on my channel, but I chose this book because I listened to her TED Talk and this is um, a modified version of the TED Talk or like a modified essay of it. So um, that's why I chose it and it's so good i think we should all be feminist she got me she got me with this one you guys so um you can watch the other video if you want a more in-depth review of that i'll link it down below next book the four agreements by don miguel ruiz i chose this book because this is one of those books where everyone's like you just have to read it and now that i've read it i'm like you just have to read it it's so good so the four agreements are to be impeccable with your word to not take anything personally to not make assumptions and to always do your best okay so literally if you could just master those your life would probably be about 10 times easier right but that's the thing you know it's it's practice you're gonna have to read it more than once and it's something that you have to work on every day but it's it's an amazing book and it really gives you the key to success spiritual success if you guys are into that you know um oh didn't even know this was next the seven spiritual laws of success by deepak chopra i love this book this was actually a reread i read it on my kindle and then a literal real life angel gifted me with this book um and my friend mish hey mish uh she brought it to my attention again and i was like i should reread that because i didn't actually read like the the hard uh copy of it so i reread it and again spiritual success it lies right here in this book and um, I like it because it's very applicable at the end of each chapter he lets you know how to actually apply these laws in your life so you're not just gonna be that person that's reading the book and not applying it you gotta you gotta apply what you read right so you are here by Thich Nhat Hanh, you guys this book changed my life this book changed my life I wrote a blog post on it it's so good I found out about Thich Nhat Hanh through Janae Aiko. I think she said that he was her favorite author or one of her favorite books was by him. It wasn't this book, but I was like, I just, I got to read about him now, right? If Janae says it, I want it, right? <laughs> anyway, um, this book is all about discovering the magic of the present moment. So for anyone who has anxiety or has a hard time living in the present, this will really get you right. Um, and I really like the way he tackles meditation because for some of us just sitting down um, and staying still and breathing and not thinking of anything that can be a little difficult. So this gives you um, the steps you can take to get to that point, which I really like. This is definitely something I would keep on my nightstand and it's something that I can you can turn to any page and it's just he, he gonna get you with something. Mm. Mindfulness is first of all the ability to recognize what is happening in the present moment. It is simple recognition without judgment or criticism, without suppression or attachment. I breathe in and I am aware that the in-breath is here. I breathe out and I am aware that the out-breath is here. There is no criticism or struggle. We're all so quick to judge and criticize that we even have the audacity to judge our breath. I love this book. You really learn a lot about meditation and Buddhism in life in general. All right. Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is not something that I would normally read that would normally be like on my list of things, uh, you know, on my reading list. But uh, it's a classic, obviously, and I never read it in high school. So I really wanted to read it. And it's a great book. 
So anyone anyone who's read this, y'all y'all know it's great. It's very very political. So that's why um, I really liked it. I like any book that makes you think, and I like anything that's gonna make you question. Like, hold up, he not talking about animals, is he? Or is he? <laughs> Next, oh my gosh, whatever happened to interracial love by Kathleen Collins? This book is magical. It's I feel like it's a script, it's a play, it's poetry, it's beautifully written, and she just writes about the lives of black people, the everyday lives of black people. That's the best way I can explain it. And she wasn't, um, her writing, her work actually wasn't discovered until after um, she passed away, which makes this even more special because it's amazing that, um, you know, people took the time to find her work and put it together so we can read it and experience it because this is magical you guys it's beautiful i feel like all books have souls and this one when i saw it i was like oh my god you're speaking to me so i really like this one kathleen collins okay oh i read the alchemist this year i read the alchemist i understand the hype now it's such a good book by paula coelho sorry forgot to say that the alchemist by paula coelho um this book is all about realizing your destiny and it is told uh, through the story of a boy named Santiago and you go with him on this journey through the desert um, where he finds his personal legend at the, at the end you realize that you found yours on the way with him as well. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I've only read it once but I definitely want to read it again because this is another book where you read it over and over and you're going to get something different every single time. I love this book. I will say it's gonna it's gonna be on my list of favorites for sure very inspiring to say the least next I read an American marriage by Tiari Jones I do have a review of this up on my IGTV if y'all want to check that out but this was such a good book it was one of the first ones that I read this year I do remember that and it basically just follows the story of a black couple Roy and Celestial Roy is sent to prison for a crime that he didn't commit crazy right no one can ever imagine something like that happening to them and when you read about it it's insane um and I just really like it because most of the story is told through letters that they send to each other so it's very very intimate and you get to see both sides of um or not both sides of the story but each person's perspective in that because obviously you feel bad for Roy because he's sent to prison for something he didn't do but it's really nice to see Celestial's point of view um, especially because she's very independent, doesn't really need a man, and now her husband is in prison. She doesn't know when she's going to see him. It's a lot to unpack. So this is good if you want a love story, a little bit of drama, and honestly, so much insight into the world of the typical Black American marriage that we wouldn't normally see. So thank you, Tiari, for putting that into this book. Next. The Song of Achilles. This book, this book is just really fun to read. Um, I remember I read it towards the beginning of quarantine. I was like, please, Jesus, just, I've been in the house for too long. I just want to read a book that takes me somewhere else. So this book right here did it for me. Um, I read Circe by Madeline Miller first, and I do not have it with me because someone is reading it right now that I lent it to. Hope you like it, girl. Hey, Bonnie. Um, so I read that book first. I Once I figure out how to put a picture in here, I'll put a picture in since I don't have it. So I read Circe, and then I read The Song of Achilles. Um, they're both so fun. Um, it's a spin on classic, a classic classic Greek mythology. Uh, so it was really fun. So in the Song of Achilles, we're going to read um, about Achilles and his lover Patroclus and what they go through um, to be together and all the struggles in their relationship and all the pressure that Achilles feels to like be this hero. And then in Circe, uh, we see a goddess that's basically an outcast. No one in her family really messes with her. So she's off on this island doing her own thing being a bad you know what I'm saying so these books were just really fun super fun to read um, but they also make you think that's my whole thing I like books that make you think any of them can for the most part <laughs> um, next their eyes were watching God by Zora Neale Hurston this was also a reread because I did read it in high school and I just wanted to read it again because 
Um, Janie, I feel like Janie's the homie. I look up to her. Janie is the main character in this book, Janie Starks. Uh, and again, just a great example of a super independent woman who doesn't really live by anybody else's rules and it's so refreshing to read about. So I always come to this book if I need a little pick-me-up or if I need a little reminder of who I am. Um, I love Their Eyes Were Watching God. Also a great classic. Um, if anyone has not read it, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, All About Love by Bell Hooks. I saw this on Twitter or on Instagram, I want to say. Um, and it's such an amazing book. Um, it gives you a definition of love. I do have um, a book review up uh, for this on my channel as well so I'll link that in the description box as well but she really gives you a definition of love and I feel like most of us don't have one um, or most of us grow up not experiencing it we think we do but we don't um, so that's why I like this book because it's very controversial and it really takes a look at love and what that actually looks like and how um, the world we live in could really use a little bit or a lot of bit more love um, highly suggest Bell Hooks and I really love how she doesn't capitalize her name because she just wants um, her readers or her audience to to focus on her work I think that's really admirable and I think that's just a cool little fact about Bell okay think and grow rich mm. Mm, this book right here you guys okay a little hard to read because there's some some casual, not so casual racism thrown in here. It was written a long time ago. Um, and I will say it probably most definitely was not written for us, but there are some gems in here. So if you are a brown person, whatever color you are, take the gems from this book, whether it was meant for you or not, and use it to your advantage because Think and Grow Rich, it really gives you it really drops some dimes. If you have a goal that you want to achieve, a business that you want to start, basically just anything. If you just need to light a fire under it, I highly suggest Think and Grow Rich. There's some really, really um, great tips and tricks in here to be successful. Um, I would even say that this is pretty spiritual. This book is about manifesting. He just didn't have the words for it yet. This book is all about like manifesting, um, reaching your dreams, your goals, your desires. Um, he calls it auto suggestion though. So however you want to look at it, it's a really great book. This is one that you definitely, um, have to read more than once. And he suggests reading it more than once. Uh, so you get the full benefit from it. So yeah. And I really, I loved this book. As you can see, the more messed up it is, the more loved it is, right? <laughs> oh, the book of night women, y'all. The book of night women by Marlon James. I think I found this on Goodreads or it was suggested to me on Goodreads and it's dark, it's deep, it's heavy, it's hard to read. I have a blog post on it. Um, it's, it's such a good book though. This is the story of the other. This is not a book to educate white people on what happened um, on the plantations. Um, so just to give you a quick synopsis of the book, it follows the story of a slave named Lilith on a Jamaican plantation and her as well as... Um, Another small group of very independent slave women are coming up with a way to revolt and to get off this plantation and to be free. So it's it's a really great book, but I will say it's hard to read. It's a book that I had to put down and just be like, just thanking God that, you know, even though the, the state of the world that we live in right now is not great, it is nothing compared to this, let me tell you. So, um... Yes, if you're like me and you like a book that makes you uncomfortable, I highly suggest this because you will, you won't even cry. That's how, that's how hard it is. You won't even cry. You're just going to be stunned, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's very similar to um, Alice Walker or Toni Morrison, I would say like modern day, very similar to their writing where you're just like, did you just say that? Like, you got to go back and be like, I know they did. They did. Oh my gosh, you guys, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. I know this was the first one I read in 2020 because the other New Year's resolution that I made was to live my most authentic life this year. So I saw this and it said, let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are. So I feel like she was like, girl, this is for you. Brene, Brene, she just knows. Okay, she just knows. I feel like you read her books and it's like, wow. You really know me, huh? But that's that's why they're great because they're really relatable. 
she's really relatable and I really like this book because it goes through um all the emotions that we go through that like get in the way of having self-compassion or embracing who we are or living a wholehearted life so I like how she breaks it down for us and you know she doesn't um make you feel silly for feeling those things it's like it's okay I'm not the only one who feels this way I'm not the only one who doesn't like public speaking or talking in front of a camera or whatever the case may be so this is very helpful if you are just trying to like get out of a little funk or trying to you know get back to who you really are deep down inside so thank you Brene we love you girl asking it is given by Esther and Jerry Hicks y'all you guys this was given to me by that angel I was talking about earlier. <laughs> I'll have to tell that story one day, but an angel literally gave me these books that changed my life. But Asking It Is Given is all about learning to manifest your desires. And it's so good. You got it. Like, this is one of those books, like, I made notes on, like, almost every page. I, like, did a ear, like, the little dog ear. I know people don't like that, but sometimes you just, you got to mark your pages, right? Um, It's so good. I'm going to read you my favorite um, my favorite passage from this book because it's just so good. Just so y'all have an understanding. Okay. There is no condition so severe that you cannot reverse it by choosing different thoughts. <laughs> However, choosing different thoughts requires focus and practice. If you continue to focus as you have been, to think as you have been, and to believe as you have been, then nothing in your experience will change. I love that. So this book is all about focusing your thoughts um, on positive things, things that you want. Um, it's about being connected to source. Basically, the book um, explains that when you ask, it is given and it's law. So regardless of what you're asking for. So if you leave the house and you're like, man, I really hope there's no traffic. The universe doesn't know what you said it just has that like feeling of desire so even though you're saying you don't want there to be traffic it, it feels that like <sighs> feeling that you have about traffic <laughs> and um you will experience it because it's law i hope i explained that right i really do but honestly it's just one of those books where i don't even want to tell y'all too much i just want you to read it because it's so good like it's that book if i could afford to send this to everyone i know and force you to read it <laughs> That's what I would do. Ah, this one makes you excited. Uh, this is Don't Call Us Dead by Dana Smith. This was sent to me by my friend Bonnie. Thank you for lending me your book. So this is actually her book. Um, this uh, poetry collection is amazing. He really goes over the experience um, of the black man in America, the gay black man in America, um, what it's like being HIV positive, um, the struggle for unity right now. It's erotic is real it's deep it's so good I didn't want it to end because I read really fast and you know with poetry it's like you have to let it like sink in and take it all in but I'm like I just have to finish it so I did I forced myself to slow down a little bit on this one and it's so good now I just want to read it again after I'm done filming this honestly <laughs> so good the last two books um, that I'm going to mention that I read in 2020 uh, are going to be Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. And I do not have that with me because Bonnie has that one. So she let me Don't Call Us Dead and I lent her um, Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. I do have a review of that on my Instagram as well. But um, that was one of the first books that I read in 2020 as well. And it's just really good. It follows the story of a girl named Queenie. Um, she lives in London, I believe, or works in London. She's British, um, and it just follows her story. She broke up um, with her boyfriend, and it kind of goes through, like, the hell that you go through when you break up with someone, and you're like, I'm still in love with him, but I want attention from other people, and, like, her life is kind of falling apart. So um, I just really liked how relatable that book is, and it's so, so good. Um Again, won't say too much because I do have a review of it uh, that I'll link for you guys. Everything that I've reviewed already, I will make sure that you guys have access to it. Um, and then the last book that I read was um, Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. That one is on my Kindle, which is why I don't have it 
that book is in a series of books I've been reading since I was in ninth grade, I believe. Um, so even if I don't think they're the best or if they're uh, written in the best manner, um, I can't get enough of them and I can't stop. I'm hooked. It's kind of like, I don't know, I've never watched Game of Thrones, but I feel like this is my version of Game of Thrones. Like no matter how bad it gets or... Um, <laughs> No, no, yeah, that's what it's like. I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still read it. So that's why I read that one. Shade of Gold by Cassandra Clare. They're good books. They're fun. Um, they're just like those, you know, I don't know if people do this like I do, but sometimes when I eat, I just want to read a book, which is why I have like certain books on my Kindle. So that'll be like my go-to, like I'm eating. I just want to like do something right now. Um, my version of that, uh, cause I really can't, I can't stand like watching videos. Isn't that funny? I, I film YouTube videos and you cannot get me to sit down and watch something. Anyway, guys, um, let me stop rambling and getting off topic. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said, every book mentioned in this video is going to be linked in the description box down below. And as always, breathe easy, my friends.